Asalaamu As Alaikum. This is an analysis on Body of Lies and this body is not lying when I say that there are spoilers ahead. So if you haven't seen the film already, you may wish to watch that first and then come back to this video afterwards and let me know what you think then. Now, Body of Lies tells the story of CIA agents who are looking for a terrorist, Al Salim. And in order to find the terrorist, they need to get him to turn on his mobile phone so they can track him down. Now, they eventually do this by setting up an architect to take responsibility for a fake terrorist attack. Now, what I'm going to be looking at in this analysis is the similarities between certain characters. So, looking at the leaders, Al Salim, Hoffman, and Harney. Now start with Al Salim. Now Al Salim is a terrorist group leader. We see that he's a family man. He remains calm throughout the film. We know that he's willing to give the order to kill to further his cause. And we also see that he has a level of arrogance when he's gloating that he's acquired a CIA agent. Now Hoffman is the CIA official. We see that he's a family man as well. He also remains calm throughout the film. We know that he's willing to let people die in order to further his goals. And we see that he also has a level of arrogance when he's deliberately pronouncing Karami's name wrong when talking to Hani. Now Hani is the head of the Jordanian intelligence. He's a family man as well, or at least he's married. He remains calm throughout the film. We also see that he's willing to let people die if it's for the greater good. And we see that he has a level of arrogance as well when he's gloating about how he managed to infiltrate Al Salim's group by putting Karami there. So here we have three people with three different backgrounds, but very similar characters. In fact, the only thing that we really see that separates them is technology. Hoffman fully embraces modern technology while Al Salim avoids it. Now we don't get an explicit statement on Harney's view on modern technology, but we do see that he uses it, but perhaps doesn't rely on it. Now I'm going to talk about the organizations that they work for and how they're portrayed in the film. First, looking at the terrorist group, it's a large overall group with many different cells. We know that the members are willing to die for their beliefs. And we also know that safety is not guaranteed when leaving the group. Now the CIA, also a large organization with many different divisions. We know that the members are also willing to die for their goals. And we also find that safety isn't guaranteed when leaving the CIA either. Now with the Jordanian intelligence, we don't get a sense of scale from the film itself, but we do see that the members are also willing to die for their goal, or at least put themselves in danger of dying. And we also see that safety isn't guaranteed when leaving, or more specifically, when choosing to betray them. So again, we have similarities between the organizations and how they're portrayed in the film as well. Now going back to Harney, Hoffman and Salim, I'm just going to talk now about how they handle their operations. Now with Al Salim, we see that he gives orders from a distance as he passes on his orders through word of mouth. We see that he stays in relative comfort throughout most of the film and at least some of the time would have his family around him while working. And we also see that he doesn't put himself in any immediate danger. Now Hoffman also gives orders from a distance, stays in relative comfort throughout the film and also sometimes has his family around him while working and we also see that he doesn't put himself in any immediate danger either. Now with Harney, we don't really see him giving any orders throughout the film but we do see that he manipulates Karami far away from the city. We also see that he stays in relative comfort throughout the film, uh, sometimes without his wife around whilst working and we also see that he doesn't put himself in any immediate danger either. Notice at the end of the film he comes after the guns were fired. So what does any of that mean? Now there's a phrase that Hoffman uses at a couple of points during the film which is ain't nobody innocent in all this. Now he uses it as a way of saying that certain Middle Eastern lives are expendable and he also uses it as a way of letting Ferris know that he will not be protected when he leaves. Perhaps a second more literal meaning would be nobody's innocent. Now that would be a stretch because we'd have to include Aisha, Carla, her children, Hoffman's children and everybody else that we don't see do anything that can be considered bad. So just looking at the main characters, are any of them innocent? Now Al Salim is the designated bad guy in the film. He's the terrorist leader. He organizes bombings across Europe and America, killing and injuring many people. So we know that he's not innocent. Hoffman, he manipulates situations, allows people to be killed and shows no regard for those who die, even for those who are on his side. We get a glimpse of the Sam's family to humanize him. But then after he dies, Hoffman says, well, I never knew the man when asked what he was going to do for his family, even though it's actually a CIA helicopter that hits the back of the car he was driving that caused his death. Now, I'm just going to elaborate on that because it perhaps wasn't made very clear in the film, but it was actually the CIA that killed Bassam. Now, if we look at this first picture of the generic terrorist as he's aiming at the RPG at Bassam and Ferris's vehicle, make note of the shape of the RPG itself. Now, if we look at this next picture, we'll see that same shape RPG missing Ferris and Bassam's vehicle. 
However, we also note in this same picture that the helicopter fires two missiles at the terrorist vehicle. Now those two missiles are important to make note of because as we see in this next picture, only one of the missiles actually hits the terrorist vehicle, where the other one heads straight towards Ferris and Bassam's vehicle, where Bassam is then killed. Now, Ferris is the CIA field agent, and as such, he's the one that's carrying out many of Hoffman's orders. And although they butt heads on a few occasions, he ultimately does what he's told in an almost an obsequious manner. Also, it's Ferris's idea to set up Omar Siddiqui to take responsibility for the fake terrorist attack that led to his death, a plan that didn't actually have official CIA backing. But what about Harney, the exceedingly polite gentleman who's a great conversationist and doesn't believe in torture? though it allows extreme punishment methods, he puts a young man in a dangerous position and as much as he says that he abhors lying, he sets up an elaborate lie for Ferris by staging Aisha's kidnapping. Also, the time the photos were taken would suggest that that was something that was planned or at least considered from early on. So at the very least, these four are not innocent. Now going back to the opening quotes, in particular, those to whom evil is done, do evil in return. Now considering all the similarities we have between characters and organisations, I think the overall message of the film is that war is not a solution, at least not in the situation it's depicting. The idea that we are the good guys and they are the bad guys is ultimately void because everybody behaves like everybody else. So our view of right and wrong is skewed by which side of the fence we just happen to be sitting on without realizing that people on the other side of the fence are just like us. And since we're all doing evil to each other, all it serves to do is to continue this cycle of violence. Ain't nobody innocent in all of this. That absolutely includes us as well. And that is my analysis on Body of Life. So let me know if you agree or if you disagree or if you think there's something that I've missed. Inshallah, the next film I plan on doing is The Matrix. So if you haven't seen it, make sure you check it out. It's a great film. Be sure to subscribe for when that is ready. But that is all for now. So shukran for watching. And until next time, watch and learn, my dear. Watch and learn.